So, okay, we've done that bit, and now you do the preparation. Yes. Did you sand you? Yep. And what I do is top and tail it. So that's why you got the scissors, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So the tail comes off, and the head comes off. Now, what do, why do you do that? Why do you take the head and tail off? Um, again, to lot. release... There's a lot in there. To release the scent. Yeah. I think the scent, you know, in the Bristol Channel, a lot of the fishing is yeah, down to scent. Yeah, there's lots of guts and lots of blood. Yeah. Either end, so yeah, I can see why. Again, take the first hook, a couple of centimetres from the top of the. Can we catch that? Can we see what he's done here? Right, okay. That's good. Again, the good old elastic. Favorite. The good old elastic. So you don't just thread the hook all the way through? You no, just... I don't. That's only personal preference. Some people thread it all the way through. Do you, do, is it easier to get the bait off or is um, it just quicker for you to bait up? Yeah, it's the way I, I do it. Yeah. Other people do it different ways. Everybody, every angler has got their own way of doing things and you stick to it. Okay. And that's my way of doing it. S second hook now. Yep. Similar way to what, as I prepared the, With the squid. Mackerel you, the squ sorry, the squid you showed us earlier. Yeah. Again, three turns of the hook. Yeah, and through that part, a good, yeah. good two inches down. Yeah, I see. So it's down. Ah, okay. So did we get that? He went. Steve went down the bait and back up again. You see, very nice. And again, finished off with my favourite. Your favourite elastic, yeah. That is. Let's let's show that nice close up to the camera. What a wonderful looking bait. Wherever the ray hits that, it's going to get hooked up. On. We got a fish on. Now this is live here folks, we're gonna catch <laughs> a fish. Yep. On to the good old peeler crab, one of my favourite baits for many species of fish. And uh, this one's already peeled, ready to go. Not all the shells off of it, not a single spot of shell in sight, so it doesn't stop the hook from penetrating the fish. And also, it's easy to put onto the hook. So, Steve, yeah. show me how you're going to put this on the hook. Right. First, I begin by cutting the crab three quarters down to the front of the crab. So, from the back end all the from way through the back, to the front. Yeah. Oh, three quarters of the way through. So, so that's show you. Uh, there we go. Can we show that to the camera? There we go, he's cut here, like so. Right. Then what are you going to do? Then again, just hook it through the leg, mm -hmm. through the leg socket. Yep, yep, yep. And it gives her a bit of secure on the hook. And again, my favourite. So you just pass it through once and then uh, yes, once. whip it to the hook and line. Very simple. Very straightforward. You do love this your elastic. Time, plastic all the way up. All the way up. Before the second hook goes in. Before, okay, right. Any reason for that? Um, well, it's, it's not a big bait. Right. So it doesn't need, you know, if a fish takes that, uh, he's going to hook into, he, he's a good chance he's going to take the second hook as well anyway. Yeah. But obviously when you're using sand eel and squid, you know, it's a bigger bait. And sometimes the f if the fish hits the centre of the bait, um, you might not hook him. So, so you've got to have that's a hook the reason for yeah. putting it with the squid and the sand eel. With a crab, it's a smaller bait, and you're more or less guaranteed to hook into the fish. Mm. And that crab is oozing out all kinds of oh, yes. pheromone juices, scents, and all sorts. And uh, so Again, what? Three turns. Three turns around the line, and back through the bait. And look at that! Isn't that absolutely? I love the smell of fresh crab. And there we go. What? fish could possibly resist that. If there's a bass out there, a conga, a ray, that will pretty much attract anything. It's a fantastic bait.
Okay, the fourth and final bait is the humble mackerel. Underestimated by a lot, but I believe mackerel can really do the goods. and it, It's inexpensive, very full of scent, very, very edible to fish, and also it's full of oils and will really give a big scent trail. And what Steve's going to do is show you how he puts this particular bait on the hook and how he prepares it. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Thank you. Right, cut him from the tail up to the head. Yep. Along the lateral line? Yes. And this is still quite frozen, this, this yes. particular fish. And do, you, do you find it easier to prepare the fish when yes. it's frozen? It's preparing it this way is a nightmare if it's, if it's fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And then across the head, or back the, the back of the head. Okay. Only halfway down though. To the, spot, to the backbone, yes? Yeah. Okay. Turn the knife. Making sure that we don't cut our fingers yes. off. So we've got a nice, uh, almost looks like you've cut two baits in one. Well, that's exactly what I've done, Mark. Let's see. So what we have, well, there's there's, there's one of the baits, and yeah. uh, absolutely lovely piece of, oh, smells good enough to eat. It really does. In fact, you probably could eat this. Yes. There we go. Let's see, put it on the hooks then. Again. Three O, three o panels again. Yeah. One through there. So the hook is, is, is coming out on the skin side. Yes. Yeah, it goes in the skin side and comes yes. out the bottom and is protruding on the skin side. Okay. Again, elastic. Yep. So really, the longer bait's all pretty much done the same way. Yeah, yes. But this uh, is something that you've just done over years and... Well, what me and Wiener have found is, uh, especially when we've been cod fishing and using big baits, mm -hmm. is that... Um, if you're using long baits, like you use a whole squid and, and a couple of worms, sometimes that cod, and it, if you put the hook in the the top and the bottom of the bait, yeah, um, sometimes the cod will take the middle of the bait. Miss the hooks altogether? Hook, no, yes, but what happens is, is this hook goes over the other hook. All oh, right, so it's no good at all. You're not going to hook anything, are no. you? So, so you've got to keep those hooks in tandem as close yeah, as possible. That's right. So if the fish now takes the top, top, top of the bait, on the, or the bottom of the bait, mm -hmm. one of the hooks is going to find him. Are we going to wrap three times around the line yes, again? Yes, same again. Pull Back down and throw up on the skin side again. There you go. Okay. Let's, let's say that again. There we are. It's ideal. I mean, you could almost fish like that, but like, you're gonna, I know you're going to put some elastic on, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> again, I, I think elastic's pretty good stuff for the simple reason. It also gives a good squeeze onto the bait and helps to re uh, release the juices into the tide, as opposed to just the tide action bashing it. It's, it's like a bit of a head start. And there we have the finished product. Two very sharp protruding hooks from a very nicely presented mackerel bait and I dare say that's got Ray written all over it. So there we have it, the final result, a nice presented, uh, beautifully presented in fact mackerel bait ready for a fish to come along and eat it and the, all that's left to do is to get out there, put, get this bait into the water and find some fish. Yeah.